Hi, this is Ruth Medjber and welcome to Adorama TV. Join me today when I get the opportunity to chat to one of Ireland's best known photographers, Donal Maloney. We will find out a bit more about his work, his technique and any tips he might have for us. Adorama TV presents Out of the Dark Room with Ruth Medjber. Hi, this is Ruth Medjber and welcome to Adorama TV. Today I'll have a brilliant opportunity to speak to one of Ireland's best known photographers, Donal Maloney. Donal's work has been showcased all over Ireland and features some great work with ad agencies, some brilliant album covers and also some fantastic personal work. Today he's going to talk us through his work, his processes and maybe even some tips and tricks to how he gets what he does. Hi Donald, thanks so much for inviting us into your studio today. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit how you got started in photography? Um, I didn't really get interested in photography till I was about 20 years of age. Um, my wife's dad, um, my then girlfriend's dad, um, gave me a present of a camera and um, that was it. I got hooked, joined a camera club, got involved in competitions, got a real bug. Um, spent morning, noon and night taking photographs and if I wasn't out taking photographs I was in my purpose-built attic developing Cibachrome prints where I didn't turn professional until I was nearly 27 years of age so um, it wasn't until the previous job I'd been working in started offering redundancies that I took the money and ran. Ah, I see. You do a mixture of commercial work for ad agencies, like probably some of the top ad agencies in the world, but then you also have a great mix of personal work through your website. How important is it to get a balance between the two in your professional life? It's, 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 it's vital now. Because what happened was, when I did turn professional back, back in my late 20s, I started working for, for advertising agencies. And basically, you're working on their ideas. You've got to satisfy them. After a number of years, you become, you become almost just a tool of the trade. So they so, tell you what to shoot and you go shoot. Well, obviously, you use your own style or you use what you can to bring your, your, your slants to, the, to yeah. the image. And that's why they employ you in the first place, which yeah. is great. But... Ultimately, you're still working on their idea and um, not everything that you shoot, you're going to love shooting, but you've got to make it look as best as possible yeah. for them. So about um, three or four years ago, um, I suddenly th I thought to myself, one day, why, why don't I love photography like I used to love it? Do you know, Because I, mean? I yeah. used to wake up in the morning dreaming of taking, you know, what am I going to do today? What am I going to shoot today? And what happened was um, I made a conscious decision to do some personal work again and get back to my roots to see why I loved it in the first place, basically. Yeah. And for the last three years, when I'm not working on commercial work, paid work, if you like, yeah. um, I'm totally immersed in, in um, personal work. You're still shooting. And it's the best fun I've had since I was a kid. Yeah, You've just finished um, shooting Sinead O'Connor's latest album cover as well as all her promo material. Mm. I mean... After doing such an expansive body of work with one person, would you say you know them quite well after that? Or did you know her already going into the situation? No, I didn't know her at all before. She actually contacted me. So it was kind of, uh, whoa, Sinead O'Connor contacting me, yeah. looking, looking to do a show. So I was kind of, kind of really chuffed about that. It was actually done, she done it on Twitter, actually. Wow. <laughs> she, she, she tweeted something like, um, does anyone know a good Irish photographer who'll do some like, promo stuff and, or someone who follows me on Twitter and I don't tweet that much said um, oh you should try Don Maloney he's really good blah 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 and the shots are fabulous and they're so gorgeous and I don't think I've ever seen Sinead O'Connor look so striking can you tell me a bit about that shoot I mean it's obviously on location somewhere is that is that what you do a lot do you take people out of your studio I, tr I, I to be 100% to be, to be honest I probably prefer shooting on location more so than the studio because there's just more layers. When, when, you're, when you're in a location, or whether it be a building, an abandoned building, and I have a thing for abandoned buildings. I've noticed your work. Yeah, yeah, I really love abandoned buildings. And um, it's just when you go into a building like that with someone you want to shoot them, you've got so many natural layers within the building okay. that you can move them around and, and you're going to get something natural no matter where you point your camera. So would you, would you go and have a look at a space first or do you wait to get kind of inspired as soon as you arrive in? Do you send someone else and then they come back and say, this is it? That's another thing. Whether, whether it be commercial work or personal work, I always do a recce. Do you? I hate arriving in a location not knowing what to expect. Okay. I like to go down, have a look at the location, see where I'm going to shoot and uh, work it from there. I don't like arriving on spec anywhere. So tell me what happens um, on, a, on a 
shoot day, let's say Sinead's shoot day, mm. would you have a plan very much in mind of how this day is going to unfold or would you almost kind of wing it from shot to shot? Oh, geez, no, 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 never wing it. No. Um, no, myself and Sinead got together a couple of days after. And it's actually, the hair is actually Sinead's idea. She wasn't getting enough publicity with the original title for the album and the original cover or whatever. And she thought that it would cause a bit more of a stir if she put, she put some wigs on. Okay. And lo and behold, it did. And her record company loved it so much that they decided that, whoa, this, this could be really cool. So they changed the album cover and she then got to change the name of the album. So it was great to be part of that, yeah. do you know what I mean? So it's kind of a collaborative effort then. She came to the table with ideas and yeah. then you styled the shots and you, you both bounced off each other and came together with this beautiful product. Exactly, but she's a very creative person as well. So she's, she's great to work yeah. with because you can bounce ideas off her and she... Sounds she, like she, you had a lot of fun doing that. Ah, oh, it was great, yeah, no, yeah. it was really good. You, do you use HCO? Is that, is that something that you, you apply after your shots or...? Um, I've only, I, I use a bit of HDR every now and again, particularly in the last couple of years. And um, the thing about HDR is that, uh, in my opinion, it's the, it's the greatest development in photography in the last 10 years. Really? Oh, completely. I, I mean, say we'd have some arguments on that point. I'm so, it's I would love to, to argue with all the HDR haters in the Brilliant. world. Maybe our viewers can have little <laughs> arguments in the comment section now about the HDR. Oh, no, completely. No, no, HDR. So, I mean, you, you, HDR can be really subtle or it can be yeah. crazy. And um, the argument usually thrown at me by the HDR haters are, oh, it looks too false, man, it's not real. And I was like, give me a break, you know what I mean? It's another tool of our trade, why, why just discard it? I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's a brilliant tool that we have. I'm thinking of your, your chair series that you had where you were very much in uh, so many different locations and yet the lighting is always gorgeous. Is it fair to say that you use a mixture of natural light as well as bringing light with you, or do you use any artificial at all out? There's very little artificial light used in the chair series. That's just really? me in a chair in the car, driving around Ireland for about four or five months. Um, the chair thing... Um, so the chair just came in the back of the car, you spotted a location, you put it out, and you went the chair the light? The chair thing happened by accident. Um, I had an exhibition um, about year and a half, two years ago, called Intruders. I needed a, um, a scale model. So I'd normally just be me and a camera going into these buildings, but I brought the chair along with me. For scale. Uh, for scale, yeah. And then you looked at the images after and went, wow. Well, I, I, the first few buildings I went into, I just sort of put the cameras, Jesus. Yeah. Chair looks kind of cool there. Chair almost has a life of its own now. So the, the entire series is So fantastic. yeah, exactly. Um, I ended up going, doing nearly 100 different location shots with the chair. And when I'd have a spare weekend, just me and the chair would go away for the weekend. <laughs> Do you just see something that you want? I mean, I'm thinking of like um, where you're on a cliff and there's gorgeous light filling in behind you. Do you just pause and wait for the light or do you just go I for it? Or? I sometimes do, yeah. Sometimes yeah. I or sometimes get up really, really early in the morning, whether it be up in the Giant's Causeway or whatever, and just walk down to, to the area the as chair. early as with a chair. <laughs> chair on this on this shoulder, camera bag on this shoulder, and a tripod under the arm like this. <laughs> and walk about a mile down this mountain to get down to a cliff or, or get down to a, the stones or whatever. Arts, no, it? it was great fun. I mean, it was, it's, it was kind of therapy as well. It was really, it was, it was, it was really, really good fun. This is Ruth Mejber for Adorama TV. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest online for your chance to win some amazing prizes. So, Donald, tell us a little bit more about how you light your subjects, whether it be a personal portrait or an ad campaign. What's the go-to lighting situation you tend to use? Um, obviously, it varies, but um, I always start with lighting from the back. Okay. I've so got a real graph for lighting from the back, and sometimes not even lighting from the front at all. No lights at the front? Sometimes I don't like using lights in the front at all. Right. So what I might do is, uh, these two lights are permanently in these positions well around this area in the studio because I normally start with this kind of a setup um, I love using <clears throat> these strip lights these are these are so old mm. that I've actually that the that the gel I've had to put blue gel to bring them back to daylight color because they've gone yellow they've gone time. yellow over time that's a perfect but, tip and trick there for our yeah, users yeah okay. if it goes too warm just throw some blue gel over your lights and you'll get them back to daylight yeah. color so a blue gel costs a couple of quid rescue your old lights exactly exactly Priceless. Um, and a nice but I, 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 I like to see people with a with a kind of a rim light down along each, each side of their neck and this is how you get it absolutely just light it from the back or even just parallel yeah 
and um, just very, very little lighting in the front. And more often than not, more often, more recently, I've been using nothing in the front other than a couple of big white boards just to reflect. Just to bounce back. Yeah, just, wow. just, just add a little bit more texture. So it loves, it's, 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 it's just, it's really cool. Okay, so it's minimal, but you get a great effect from it then. Absolutely, I think people try to overlight stuff way too often. People okay. just try so hard, as I did myself for many years. You just try and introduce so much light that you just lose everything. Less is more. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to Adorama TV, where we have lots of information on photography related items. Also, we'd love to hear what you think, so be sure to comment, share, and let us know what you think. Bye for now. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.